We also have earth changes occurring, and uh, we have uh, Anne and, and uh, Christina. Tell us about the latest in terms of what's going on with the earth changes and the uh, major sinkhole developments that are occurring, uh, the volcanism and all the other things that are happening to our planet. And do you have some update reports, uh, Christina? Well, we've, we've had some pretty major earthquakes in the, in the last week. In fact, the number of earthquakes is astounding. 572 in the past week alone, above a 2.5. We had a 7.6 in the Philippines today, uh, a couple in the uh, high sixes in the Jan Mayan region that's between Greenland and Iceland, just north of Iceland, which is a very rare spot for a big quake like that. Uh, 4.1 in Yorba Linda. We had also the swarm in Brawley. I think the highest one there was a 5.5. 7.3 in El Salvador, 6.6 in Indonesia. And then all this was uh, preceded by the large 7.7 in Russia about a week and a half ago. I've been watching some of the buoy movement, uh, NOAA, and uh, the Japan buoys and the Indonesia buoys have been going off for a few days now, showing that the ocean floor seems to be rising and pushing up. How much and is it rising? Because you mentioned the number earlier today before the show. Yeah, I believe it was 110 meters in Indonesia. And then uh, yesterday we had a 5.5 five and a 4.6 off of Honshu. And just within the last hour, there were two more there, a 4.5 and a 4.4. Four four. And it's really concerning, especially what's going on at the Fukushima plant. You and I didn't even have a chance to talk about this earlier because it was supposed to be fixed. They've been having problems keeping up the coolant level in reactors one through through three. And it's being reported by Kyoto this afternoon that the water levels are still dropping, even though they flushed the pipes. TEPCO is unsure whether the flow will recover, and they don't know why it's not filling up the reactors. And it's at a level now. Well, I'll give them make a, a, a 90 to 95 percent guess that all it is is the gradual deterioration with neutron annealing of the seal. Uh, no matter how many pumps they put on there, if the seal for that reactor cooling pool uh, eventually degrades, the pumps can't keep it. In fact, the engineers have talked about this, including uh, Ernie Gunderson, that once the seal breaks down, no amount of pumping or high-speed pumps will fix the problem. And when that happens, they've taken out the easiest bundles to remove, which are the newer ones. The older ones are very unstable. They're very hot. They're also damaged by these inch-long chunks of concrete down there that are blocking removal of these bundles that are probably twisted. And there's subsidence of the whole reactor cooling pool and these other buildings, so that means that the superstructure is twisted, so it's not going to be as a clear problem. They have to have cranes to pull out these bundles. What's likely to happen is that one or more of them are going to reach what's called critical temperature if they haven't fixed the problem, which they averted about six weeks ago. They, they actually had a D-day or D-minute when they expected that it would hit critical temperature at a certain time around 2 or 3 in the morning about a month and a half ago, and if it did, they expected to see these cooling pool fuel rod assemblies blow their cork like champagne bottles on the tarmac in Phoenix at 115 degrees. So what we're likely to see is a major release of radiation, as I said already, and I predicted that it would happen this summer, sometime in July or August. It looks like we're on track because I'm seeing radiation spikes on my detector into the 70s now, and they're very short. They don't last more than so many minutes, and then they just drop back again. So what's this? You know, it's like a wave of radiation. But they did the 61st release of radiation from Fukushima. We also have sinkholes all over the planet. And, of course, Dan Dale's theory, as I mentioned in the earlier segment, it seems to make more sense that there is a something going on with actually planetary remodeling. So something's happening to the remodeling of the actual planet where sinkholes are developing all over the place uh, and subsidence that are near fault lines, uh, the area around Louisiana where the sinkhole is is actually connected with the same fault line system that goes out to the Macondo drill site and all the way up to New Madrid as well. So there's something really bad about to happen in these areas. It would sure seem that way. And, and just in the last few days, the helicorders from the New Madrid have really been going off, um, all of them really, along the, the New Madrid fault line. Uh, I, I looked into it after someone had sent me an article from National Geographic talking about the uh, water weight of heavy rain possibly precipitating earthquake activity. Um, and this was published in 2009. And so it, when I went to the, the helicorders, I was really surprised at the amount of activity that's going on there. 
And that, coupled with the fact that we have a lot of new plants right now that are having problems with tritium leaking underground. The pipes are breaking under the plants. And where this has been the most noticed is at the plant uh, about 40 miles north of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And you think of where the proximity is to the sinkhole, the Mercondo well, and the New Madrid. It's all along that line. And they've had a, a problem that's been worsening since December when it was first discovered. They had 22,000 picocuries per liter being measured in their groundwater wells. It's now up to 432,000 picocuries right. per liter. So something's really leaking under there, and they can't find the source. They're drilling new wells. Well, well, the reason why there's the reason why that's happening, and just give some theory behind this, as a chemist, what we're having is uh, the nuclear reaction of the Earth creates the batholith of oil. You take smaller molecules like methane and shorter chain hydrocarbons, and over millions of years, under nuclear reactions with radioisotopes, it literally catalytically creates longer and bigger chain molecules. And that's what's happening. These radioisotopes indicate the deep chambers inside the batholiths and the air chambers of the Earth itself, the tectonic plates, are releasing gases through fault lines because there's about to be a major shift. Well, okay. Um, they do think that um, there was a cover-up, apparently, in in, uh, in that area when, when uh, when Texas Brian uh, drilled that sinkhole, and they didn't tell the public, but the uh, government gave them permission to fill the um, to fill their cavern that's in the salt uh, salt dome with uh, radioactive, which they're calling ra natural radioactive sources. Well, what they call natural radioactive sources uh, is that when you do drilling. Uh, you get radioactivity of the scale, and they call it a common byproduct of oil and gas exploration and production. And so they said that <laughs> they said that they gave them permission, but they didn't tell the public they gave them permission. And they took 20 cubic feet of natural occurring radioactive material and pumped it into the cavern and into another Texas brine salt cavern in another parish. So um, part of this, uh, I, you know, I agree with you. Part, part of it is the idea they're pumping in radioactive material. It's also part of the cover-up because I've known and I've dug back some forensic work going back to 1951 where they're told not to drill at the Macondo drill site. And it's because the oil industry has known this. And the reason why I knew is one of my friends, her name is Connie Musso. That's her maiden name. She's an oil engineer. She worked in Russia, all over the world. She's what's called a deep oil engineer. And her husband also is a senior oil engineer as well, works in Kazakhstan. They're close friends of mine. The oil industry is known for 60 years about abiotic oil. It's a big lie that it's from ferns and dinosaurs. It's a big lie. The oil industry wants to make sure you believe that this lie of, of want, that there isn't enough of it, but it's created by nuclear reactions deep in the bowels of the earth. Welcome back. Uh, and you mentioned something very important. It ties in with the uh, methane uh, batholith and, the, uh, and the, uh, these, these migration channels from the methane class rates that were disrupted at Macondo two years ago. Uh, and I believe it's connected with what's going on in Louisiana. Now they have also the overburden of this storm constantly sitting for now days over Louisiana, dumping more and more water, knocking out power to half the air state. Uh, and also the pressure of water combined with these, these new... Um, Fissures. Sinks, fissures and sinkholes, and they're seeing radon come up and methane. Tell us all about the, what your analysis of what's going on and what this means. Well, apparently the, the, um, the oil companies want to mine methane. That's natural gas because oil and, oil and petroleum products are now, uh, they're kind of like bad words in the energy market. But natural gas is still okay. So, but in order to mine it, they have to go into these big math methane caverns where the methane is under pressure and ever since that that uh, blow up in the uh, Gulf of Mexico now those that cavern was five miles down but they've noticed that there have been fissures that have been uh, in row in yeah uh, they've been going into the shorelines of Texas and Louisiana and, and Mississippi and uh, Alabama and they, they're they're deep and so these you know, the methane was disturbed. The, the cavern was dis disturbed. We know it was disturbed. And that methane is under a great deal of pressure. 
And so if it can find a migration channel, like through a fissure, then you're going to have methane linking down to the ground, and um, you're going to have um, say, you're going to have like uh, swamp gas and things like that. Well, those things just automatically can um, cause a great deal of damage just by themselves. And if that cavern then leaks out enough of their methane, you could have a a, uh, a methane explosion. Yeah, I think that. Uh we're going to be surprised at the earth changes. I'd say there's a high likelihood in the next, say, five years of a New Madrid fault uh, and or San Andreas fault, especially with the earthquakes that are happening right along the uh, California-Mexico border, right along the extension for the San Andreas. The Madrid is going off the scale. Talk about that for a moment because, um, and Christine, you can hop in here any time because, we need to have people understand that this is science. We don't have all the answers, but we're raising more questions because the earth changes are happening. Uh, we're having climate change. We're also having earth changes itself. The planet is remodeling. The planet is remodeling. We have the magnetic north pole racing from the Alaska-Canada border. It was right above the, the border there between Canada and Alaska, and it is now hitting very fast geolo in geological terms. I mean, we're talking about feet per year uh, towards Siberia, so it's, it's heading back to where it started, which would be above Greenwich, England. And um, that means that the core of the Earth must be rotating, because that's, that's the only thing that's going to move the magnetic pole, is if the core of the Earth which is a torus, a nickel iron torus, if it, if, it, if it changes its angle of rotation, then that magnetic pole is going to move. And we know that it's moving. I mean, we, we're watching it move. The scientists are. And we also right. have a change in the tilt of the Earth, and it's now uh, nine feet closer to Greenwich than it was. So we've, we've had a slight change in the angle of the tilt of the Earth. And... Um, what we've been thinking is that this that this object coming into the uh, solar system is, is aggravating that, and that because we have the core of the Earth rotating and changing its angle of rotation, that it's um, that the crustal part, that's the part that we live on, the 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 uh, tectonic plates are slipping on the core, and we are expecting. Um, considerable tectonic movement in the coming years. Yeah, and, so, and syzygy, which is alignment of planets, perigee, which is a close uh, approach to, say, the moon, uh, increases the risk of that, as well as the equinoxes and high tides. So all those things combined increase the risk of a, of a major quake as we move within the next few weeks to the September 21st period. We're increasing the risk that we're going to get a quote an energy release. Uh, but these major, if you look at the actual seismic charts which you sent me uh, the link to, Christina, this is very scary looking. It is, a, and the, another factor too is the uh, the massive amount of water that we have that are, are coming off the Arctic zone. Um, historical melt, you know, that water is heavy. Um, NASA pointed out two years ago that the ocean floor is sinking from the weight of some of this water. That could be affecting uh, some of the crustal movement as well. Yeah, exactly. Now they say that that uh, 7.9 earthquake that occurred uh, didn't um, didn't create the tsunami, but it could have. It was a little bit deeper than you would expect a tsunami to be uh, generated. It was 20 miles down instead of uh, eight. And um, that was probably part of the reason. And also, it might have been a slip uh, fracture instead of a uh, uh, instead of a primary fracture that would have gone up and down and, and moved the ocean. That's why they issued the tsunami, the tsunami warning. And there, when I read their news reports, they're they're a little unsure why there wasn't a bigger tsunami. I mean, they're, they're, they said it could have generated a big tsunami, but it didn't, and they're not quite sure why it didn't. It was on a, a subduction zone, and those, those quakes that occur, especially if they're a 7.8, are, uh, are likely to create big tsunamis that will cross the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, either something neutralized it. In other words, you've got to figure an, an opposite force must have neutralized the tsunami at the generation site. 
Um, preparedness. What what do you, or what do you tell people to do, uh, Christina and and uh, in terms of preparing for you know food shortages, a possible economic uh, you know seizure. I would say sometime in the next six months to a year. Uh, we know the fiscal cliff. These are real things. You know, you can Google it. So people say, well, I'm a skeptic. Good. Be a skeptic. But realize that food shortages are going to happen. Food prices are going up. The banks are doing all kinds of stupid things that aren't going to fix it. They're not just saying, putting a firewall between the, the speculative economy and the real economy with Glass-Steagall. Uh, there's no talk that I hear so far, although they want to, quote, have a balanced budget, uh, to yet put up a, not only Glass-Steagall, but also to bring back the Federal Reserve and make it only under the control of Congress. Uh, we have also the, the green light for a war in the Middle East, which we know will cause the price of oil to go through the ceiling. We have the meltdown of Europe. People should realize we're not trying to be negative. We're trying to be realistic so you can plan for what could happen and be prepared for it. Um, what do you tell them? And, and you start you know, waking up to any one of those things that you just mentioned leads to uh, everything else and how it's all tied in together. I mean, how I prepare is going to be different from from how you will, depending on your financial resources and so yeah. forth. I, I just tell everyone to do what you can. Be aware yeah. of what's going on. But the number one thing that you need to do is prepare mentally. Yeah. Outside of, um, you know, buying a lot of stuff I don't think is really necessary. You can get You can take a lot of free classes at some of the local sporting goods stores, REI and even the Kabbalah's and and Bass Pro, I mean, they have, you know, free classes on, on all kinds of survival and camping stuff. You know, educate yourself, do what, do what you can on your limited budget, and, uh, you know, uh, you can find a lot of items even at a, a dollar store. And just stock up on food wherever you can. Water is really important. Learn how to make a, a container to, um, to filter rainwater outside through clay. It's real easy if you just have, you know, two Tupperware containers. So it's going to depend. It's going to be different for, for different people, low cost versus high cost. But the number one thing is to prepare mentally. Yeah. And I tell people, we'll start off with simple things, three weeks of water, uh, get canned goods and other dry goods, uh, start getting things like our specials for preparewise.com forward slash Dr. Bill. We have specials there now. You can get for a few hundred dollars, enough food for you know several months for your family. Get heritage seeds. You know, just be prepared with even having pots so you can actually put water in them. And then getting some hundred well poly and and deck screws and some two by fours. You can even make a greenhouse even this or even along the side of your house. No matter how far north you are, if you can heat it and keep the soil temperature above fifty degrees, you can grow food year round if you can get in a south facing area of your home. Uh, it's a lot easier than people think to actually survive. But you have to start thinking of these skill sets now and simply do some simple actions. So. Um, Replace fear with curiosity and yeah, learn and as much as you can because all that will help. And, and John yeah. mentioned on his show, too, about taking a, a, a course in, like, first aid, how beneficial that would be. Yeah, take uh, the, I, I tell them I, one, one, the first aid course, one of the best ones is the CERT course with the local fire department, C-E-R-T. You can get the CERT manual. Um, yeah, get involved. Uh, ask questions. Don't just think, that, oh, well, we're doing this because it's strange radio entertainment. No, it's not. We know if we're going to preserve America, we're going to preserve human civilization through another catastrophe. It's because we in, we ask the right questions. We inspire you to realize you're not a victim. You can be an active person that can protect yourself, your family, your t city, your town, your society, your country. And then uh, we can move forward. Take care, everybody, over the Liberty holiday. Take care and drive safely.